Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button. And please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Man, where we have lots and lots of fun. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of the DC Multiverse Daily. Supergirl cancelled at the CW. Now that's a bolter out of the blue, not because it's a strong, great, epic version of Supergirl, because this show has been limping on now for five seasons, and now they've announced that next year's sixth season will be the final one. This is, of course, the second Arrowverse show in, a, in, a, in the space of a year that's been cancelled at the CW. Now, let's be absolutely clear about one thing. Stargirl is Supergirl's replacement. And let's be blatantly honest here. Stargirl is a much better show. And it represents um, the Justice Society of America. It does a lot of more things for, you know, geekdom, if you like. But this is not the reason that Supergirl is being cancelled. Now, I've heard people, supporters of this show saying, it's because Melissa's pregnant and she wants to be a mum. Bullshit, 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 right? There are hundreds and thousands of women in this entertainment industry, most of them that I know, that become pregnant, they take their time off, they come back to work. Supergirl could have taken a year off, six months, you know, have a long male needed off. That's fair enough. You have a baby, you have every right to take some time off and be with your child and the father of the child, right? That's fair enough. No one's got any problems with that. No one would have said anything. It would have been fine. But no, that is not the reason this show has gone. This show has gone because they have taken an iconic character and watered her down and flushed her down the toilet. Let's not forget that this show was an official CBS show. The pilot is, I think, the one of their, if not their highest rated pilots of all time. This show started very well, and from episode two onwards, the ratings tanked, right? I remember the second episode being called Stronger Together, some kind of messaging of girls sticking together or something like that. Now, I'll be clear here. I love Melissa Benoist. I think she's one of the uh, strong TV actors. I've seen her in different things. Um, I saw her in Glee as well. She is very good. Now, Supergirl has been a, a, a great project for Mel because she met the love of her life. Her husband there, they're having a kid, right? He played Monel. His real name escapes me right now. So it worked out quite well for her. But this show is an, un, an, an adulterated mess. Now, let's read quite a long thread that Mel, Melissa Benoist, gave us to her reaction of the cancellation of Supergirl. To say it has been an honour portraying this iconic character would be a massive understatement. Seeing the incredible impact the show has had on young girls around the world has always left me humbled and speechless. Don't, don't worry about all the young boys who I know love this show, and actually so many people from the LBGTQ community who love this show, you just mentioned young girls. Don't worry about it because that's the way you will swing. She's had that impact on me too. She's taught me strength I don't know I had to find hope in the darkest places and that we are stronger when we are united. What she stands for pushes all of us to be better. She has changed my life for the better and I'm forever grateful. I'm so excited we get to plan our conclusion to this amazing journey and I can't, cannot wait for you to see what we have in store. I promise we're going to make it our one hell of a final season. Bummed I'm not able to take part in the, oh that was um, ages ago when, now we know why she didn't take part in DC Fandom. And by the way, because what's the point of promoting it? And they weren't ready to announce that they were cancelling uh, the show. So she's excited that they get a chance to give this character an end to the journey. This isn't Lost. This isn't Smallville. Uh, it's Supergirl fighting criminals. There's no end. How will they end this show, by the way? Maybe her and Lena Luthor get married or something. It wouldn't surprise me. This is how these people are, right? You know, there's, I don't think this character needs an ending, by the way. She just has to remain being Supergirl. I mean, but it's but it's interesting, right? Because we talk about endings. And, uh, you know, I don't think this is the end of Melissa Benoist, the Supergirl, by the way. And I, if you remember rightly, I did a video when there was another rumour they were cancelling it. Those rumours were obviously 
ultimately true. And I said, you know, they're developing Tyler Hecklin in a, his own Superman show. Why not call it Superman and Supergirl? Unite them together. They can, you know, she can be in her city and he can be in, in his. And they can unite and it would be awesome. And it would spread out um, the time frames that they needed to focus on Tyler Superman and Mel Supergirl. But instead, they called it Superman and Lois. Now, you, in my idea, Lois Lane would still be prominent, but she just wouldn't be in the title card, which is no big deal, right? But they didn't do that. But I don't believe that um, Melissa Benoist's role as Supergirl is totally dead. I think she will, she will cameo and guest star in Superman and Lois, and maybe in season two, she'll, it may even be a regular or a, a recurring guest star. This is not the end. For her, we'll see her again because they're not going to do what they did to Oliver Queen and kill her off. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Now, what does this mean for Supergirl's future within the DC multiverse strategy? I don't think it's any accident that they're cancelling this show as they go forward in this multiverse strategy. Now, we know they were developing a Supergirl film. Now, we heard from heroic Hollywood and Berto Gonzalez quite a few months back that they can that idea because they wanted to go forward with a Superman movie. Now, I think it's ridiculous if you're a creative and you say, well, we can only have Superman or Supergirl. We can't have both. Because when we seen Tyler, Tyler's Superman and um, Mel's um, Supergirl together, they've got great chemistry. It's really worked well. And I enjoyed that element of it. Now, let's get one thing clear. I've been in love with the Supergirl character ever since I saw Helen Slater's Supergirl movie. And I think that's a much better version of the character than the TV show. It may have not have been the best movie and everyone's cup of tea. After all, that Supergirl movie was a flop. But unfortunately, back then, people didn't really weren't interested in female led projects, which is a shame. There were some really successful ones like Alien, right? But, and the Terminator franchise as well. But ultimately, it wasn't something people used to, didn't watch female leads, which is a shame. That's ridiculous, right? That's sexist within itself. But anyway, I love the character of Supergirl. And I'm heartbroken that after we get this six-year run, that it hasn't been a great version. And Melissa Benoist, who gave some wonderful performances at time, I love the episode with Red Tornado in season one, when you see that anger. When she can't control her anger and her temper. That's actually a really, really good episode. I loved it. So we go back to the CBS show. Now, CBS and um, CBS's head made it absolutely clear that the Supergirl show had nothing to do with anything else within the DC TV universe or the films. And they didn't want it to. They wanted it to be its own thing. Now, this is the kind of chat which is horrible for, for, for nerds, right, and fans, because this is why the DC Multiverse strategy and its first chapter, Flashpoint, is brilliant, because we're going to see everyone suddenly canon and can share the screen together. But back then, that wasn't the attitude. So they wanted nothing to do with Arrowverse. They, I mean, Belanti was involved in this, by the way, but they said this is going to be its own show. We want, you know, we want Melissa's Supergirl to have time to bloom, and who knows what the future holds. So she was in another Earth, blah de blah de blah now, I actually think the pilot's okay. I didn't really uh, hate the pilot, apart from the moment when Alex goes, is it because she's a woman? And that's when I started frowning, because I just thought, wow, you've done such a good job setting this character up in this first episode. And um, David Harewood as Martian Manhunter, brilliant casting, great British actor. Um, you know, Kalise the flock up, right? Absolutely, you know, as Cat Grant. Brilliant, strong casting, of course, once they decided, CBS decided to cancel the show, Kalista wasn't interested because she was going to have to take a, a, a pay slope. Um, she was going to have to work in Canada. She wanted to be in California, and that's Kalista's prog prerogative. You know, when Supergirl was going to be this big, high-octane show um, before they decided to cancel it and it flopped, um, Kalista was great casting, as was David Harewood, and you had a really good, strong, talented cast. And, you know... Obviously, Alex played Alexi Gray in Grey's Anatomy, so we all loved her from there. I forgot what. Tyler, Tyler Lee. I love Tyler. But I just think Alex was a waste of time. So what went wrong with Supergirl in its first season? Well, if you think about CBS and you think about the kind of dramas they have, um, if, if you look at the um, Sherlock Holmes drama they have with um, Johnny Lee Miller, 
it's very crime based, very crime of the week. It's it's more for a more intelligent audience. But the way they went out super go, it was like you were just watching a CW show. This should have been a more high octane, deeper dive, intelligent crime of the week kind of Supergirl, you know, investigating every week rather than the Mamby Pamby kind of childish thing they went after. That's not what the CBS audience are or want. So they got it totally wrong for the audience they wish, you know, they want basically they wanted to get young females at CBS. They wanted to change the dynamic of their audience. And that's a big problem because their audience hasn't changed in 30, 40 years. So all of a sudden, their audience is going, well, we'll watch the pilot. It's Supergirl. She's awesome, right? We all remember the Helen Slater movie. Let's give this a chance. So, of course, record ratings for the pilot. And we were all excited. We thought, well, wow, this could, you know, we, I wanted it to remain on CBS because I just felt that CBS was a great platform for a superhero show, right? And normally these shows are on small networks, right? Rarely they're on the big ones. So it was very exciting. But they made a mess of it, then it was cancelled, and then um, they decided that it would air on the CW on it, in its second season. So they quickly did this um, kind of crossover with um, Grant Gusting's The Flash and Supergirl Meeting, and that episode was very CW. Of course, by then, it didn't matter because that's the kind of audience they wanted. So Supergirl was axed on CBS and, and, and then went over to the CW, and I persevered, I think, with the second season, and some of the third season, but uh, maybe the fourth I can't remember. But I gave up on it because I do love this character. And it's such a shame they made such an unadulterated mess of it. I do believe this character has a future. Imagine Zack Snyder doing a kind of Gal Gadot casting type of level of casting for Supergirl. She would be awesome in the movies. We know that Zack was planning something for Supergirl. We still don't know if she's in his... Um, um, in his Justice League movie, even though he denies that. I don't believe him, but we shall see about that. He's normally very straight with the fans, so maybe she's not in it. But I do know there were future plans because we had this prequel comic, didn't we, before Man of Steel, where she was involved. And we know the empty crib in 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 the ship, right, um, probably was Supergirl. And Supergirl had been on Earth for thousands of years. So she's somewhere out there within the DCEU, right? And so some, look, I know the rumours that Umberto was giving about they're not doing a Supergirl film. I don't believe that's true. But now within the multiverse strategy, you know, Melissa Benoist, Supergirl, can have definitely a role in the Superman and Lois TV show. And I definitely feel there's a future for the character, whether or not Mel's part of that future. I don't know. I think there's a future in the film universe for Green Arrow. Again, whether that's um, Stephen and Mel or somebody else will, be, will remain to be seen. But you've got to, I think a contemporary Supergirl has to be more, I suppose, realistic. It was a bit like watching Sandy from Greece, in a way, more focusing on her friendships and her relationships. The, the stuff with Monel was so boring. And the more this character failed to bring in, um, you know, a variety of audiences into the CW, and, and the less and less the ratings got, um, the more they tried to trample on Superman to try to build her up. So I remember that crossover when, uh, who, I forgot what it, who it was on The Flash, right? It was going, um, what's his name? Cisco, that's it. My favourite Kryptonian, very aggressively. Superman isn't his favourite Kryptonian, Supergirl is. They thought they could crush Superman and raise up Supergirl. And the more they did that, the more they failed. So it looks like now Belanti, since at and and Warner Media have taken over. Maybe they had a chat with them and said, right, there's certain things we, we don't want you to do anymore. And we need a new generation of superhero shows. So already we're getting Superman and Lois, Stargirl. This is the new era. And um, I think Jeff Johns has done a great job with Stargirl, by the way. Whether you loathe him or love him, he really has. And it's a much better show. And it's more faithful to the comics. And it works. I think the other problem with Supergirl was this whole team Supergirl there's many characters like Green Arrow who, in the comics, does work with certain superheroes, right? As does Batman. There's the Bat family. It can work if you do that. I don't personally think Superman or Supergirl should have a team behind them. It doesn't work. They're not the origins. They're not the bases. They're not the canon of the character. 
And I'm not saying you have to copy and paste canon. I'm just saying Supergirl being this lone hero that's still got friends that maybe don't know about her is pretty cool, but she's still doing her thing. Because with Supergirl and Superman, if they're those solo heroes and the audience is the only one who knows their true identities, it's a relationship we have with those characters. But when everybody knows who they are and they're in this big, you know, big group and they're working for this secret organization. And I thought it kind of worked at first with David Harewood and Melissa Benoist. And, you know, I forgot her name already. The actress who plays um, Tyler. Ch I forgot her name already who plays Alex. Anyway, it kind of was all right in the first season. And I thought the dynamic was OK when she was getting when it was all new. But I think it got very, very old hat. And as I say, you've got to make Supergirl contemporary. I suppose in a way it's more funny. She's more of a tomboy a little bit, um, which is a bit, I think that's a bit of fe a word feminists don't like. But, you know, definitely someone who's a little bit more maybe muscular, maybe someone who's a little, you know, just someone who packs a punch, even though she's got powers and she doesn't need muscles. It was just, it simply didn't work the way they went out it. At it, And you can tell the kind of audiences it brought in. It brought in, yes, it did bring in young girls, and that's the audience they wanted. But ultimately, those people slowly left the show behind. So it's always sad to find out something's going, but this show has been limping on since episode two of season one. They've tried so many different things. Maxwell Lord, you know, good-looking, cool Maxwell Lord. Um, we're still looking for the CW, CW's version of Maxwell Lord, and no one's found him since the finale. Was he in season two? No, I don't think he was since the finale, because they were trying to give him something. But I think the moment Supergirl truly died is when Kalista Flockhart left. I think when we heard she was leaving, because I think she was the best thing about that whole series, the first one, she gave it some gravitas, and all of a sudden, Jimmy Olsen was, you know... Heading Catco. How does a photographer go from being a photographer to, you know, actually running Catco? Ridiculous, right? And as Cat Grant would ever let someone like that with no history of running anything run Catco? Absolutely um, ridiculous. The relationship between Jimmy and Kara simply never worked. They binned that and then they went for Monel and then they kind of stuck with it. Then they binned it a little bit. And then they, then they brought in Lena Luthor, which was exciting because I thought we were going to get this brilliant, awesome, you know, sister of Lex Luthor. Then it started getting better when they brought in their own version of Lex Luthor, which I thought was never going to work. They, he'd probably be a crappy watered down. But wow, wow, he's absolutely brilliant. And there's an opportunity there maybe to, he can, maybe one day we'll even see him in the movie. I'm not saying instead of Jesse Eisenberg. Maybe as well as. Maybe we'll see them in the same scene. Wouldn't that be awesome? Both great actors. So that's something they got right. And it, it seemed to be turning the corner with him in it. But then it just it went back to type. They just can't help themselves. And I think what's happening now, now Warner Media and AT&T are running things. They want proper, you know, comic book accurate TV shows. So I think you will see more and more of these shows being cancelled. I think that Black Lightning is a pretty strong show. I don't watch it all the time, but I like it. And I think it's it's a less childish show. So I think they may stick with it. But certainly from the moment Stargirl um, was announced as to going on the CW, Supergirl was toast. You can't, they don't have the budget to support. You know, these might be multi-trillion dollar companies, but they don't have the money. You know, the, the CW has its own budget, right? And it's partly owned by Warner and partly owned by CBS. That's how the transition from Supergirl CBS to Supergirl CW actually happened. And so one had to go. And once you see them creating new shows, you know some will go. Now, it's amazing, really. Um, has there been an official cancellation of Legends of Tomorrow? Amazing. Legends of Tomorrow still exists when Supergirl doesn't. Now, didn't Legends of Tomorrow start before Supergirl? If I remember rightly, someone can correct me in the comments down below. I think what you're seeing is a new universe. Um, I do expect Flash and Legends to be cancelled eventually. I don't think they'll last. And again, that version of Barry Allen will maybe have more to do in 
um, the movie verse of the multiverse strategy because, of course, he can be in his own movies because we know he exists within this multiverse strategy now. This is what's genius. And this could happen to Mel Benoist as well. And I think the multiverse strategy is partly the reason um, Supergirl won't be on TV anymore. Of course she's going to take a break with her child, but she's an actor. She's ambitious. She's not just going to sit there doing her knitting, right? So um, that was the news that hit us yesterday. Supergirl cancelled at the CW. And I think we're going to see some better quality of DC TV shows coming not only on the CW, but on HBO Max. Really looking forward to J.J. Abrams' Justice League Dark as well. So what do you think about the Supergirl can cancellation? Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more DC Multiverse Daily. See you again soon.